Here we've got a 5-speed automatic ZF transmission. As you can see, it's a longitudinally mounted transmission that came from the era of the late 90s and early 2000s. It used to fit a lot of European vehicles such as BMWs and Jaguars. I bought it as a core, so let's tear it down to see some carnage. First thing I'm going to do is remove this bell housing. Now I can remove the bell housing and pump assembly. You can see inside of here the pump is still attached. That sure makes this transmission look a lot smaller. Next I'm going to remove the input shaft. It just slides out. Oh, I can already see a burnt clutch pack. Oh, my favorite. It's more snap rings. That wasn't too hard. All right, we got the next set of clutches. This one is not burnt. And I've got another snap ring in here. Pop that out. And then we got a set of clutches again. This one doesn't look like it's in the best of shape. Yeah, it's kind of burnt up. All right, there's some fluid in here. Let's see if we can turn this upside or down and drain it. Oh, it's a lot of fluid. Yeah, the fluid that's coming out of here is pretty dark brown and it kind of smells so this transmission is toast. All right, next I'm going to attack the transmission pan, but boy, these bolts are super rusty and crusty. They're actually a Torx T25, of course, because it's German. They have to put Torx in here. So I went inside and got my wife's old toothbrush here. And I'm just going to clean this up before I put the Torx in, so hopefully they don't strip out. Hope it's a T25. Bro, this strips. My whole timeline is done for today. Oh, it turned. Yay! Now I just got to do that two dozen more times all the way around. Alright, I was able to get all these bolts free. I'm going to go ahead and zip them off. Well, the joke is, this thing just pops right off. Yeah, look at all that metal inside of there. And I can smell it. It smells burnt. Alright, so here we have the transmission filter, which is just a felt-like material. I'll go ahead and remove this. And pop this guy off. Doesn't look that clean inside of there, non surprisingly. Whoa, this whole thing is covered with metallic particles. There's a little clip here that holds this plug in. So it pops through so you can take out the valve body. Now, the valve body is basically the brains of the transmission. Electronically controlled through these solenoids, it's going to direct fluid flow through this maze, which is going to then lock up the appropriate clutches when you want to shift gears. Go ahead and start removing all the 25 Torx over here. To help keep my hands clean, I've got my old pillowcase over here. Boy, was this thing really comfy. Can't have oily hands when disassembling a transmission. Alright, it's time to see if I got all the bolts out. There we go. There's the valve body. See, there's a spot to pry the set next set of clutches out. Seems like the first set is kind of pressed in there. It's going to release some of these hydraulic lines here. Alright, the secret is to get these little rubbers out of these two holes over here. And then I'm able to slide this front piece out. And my hands are slippery again. Make sure they're always clean. Oh, finally. I feel like this piece might have been press fit or splined inside of here. That's why it took so long to get out. Next we got a planetary gear set. It's like something's been burned here. And another set of planetary gear sets on the back side. These are the sun gears from that planetary gear set. Probably goes in the middle here somewhere. Top here I see a couple of... It's just an end cover. For the remaining planet carrier inside of here, I have to beat out the shaft. Alright, so once you release this parking pole, this parking lock gear here comes off of the shaft and somebody please send me proper snap ring pliers. Yes! No idea what the proper tool would, for this would be because it doesn't have ears. Alright, and with that snap ring out of there, finally. There we go. Just a rubber seal hanging it up. That's the last planetary carrier. Alright, so here we've got most of the transmission all taken apart. Let's take a look at some of the carnage. I'm going to first start at the front here where we got the input shaft and the first clutch where you can see burn marks all the way around here. Let's take this one apart. Snap right in here. Whoa, it's so burnt up inside of there. So it looks like we got one clutch sandwich inside of the other clutch over here. We've got a bearing here outside piece comes out. Whoa, that's really dark. All burnt up. Alright, let's open this clutch up here. Be bad. These clutches are toast. Now the responsibility of a clutch is to lock up whatever's externally splined over here, which in this case is this ring, to whatever's internally splined, which in this case is the input shaft. And as you can see, it's completely burnt up. There's supposed to be an alternate between the steels, which are externally splined over here, and the friction discs, which are internally splined over here. Now normally, this would be a nice brown color, and it would be nice and clean, but this one's completely burnt up, and it's all black inside of here. So I can definitely see, no matter how much fluid you apply, these clutches aren't going to hold, and that input shaft is just going to spin without any input to the rest of the transmission.
And in order to lock that clutch up, we have this giant piston over here. And it fills up with hydraulic fluid through this hole over here. And that's just going to push up against the snap ring to lock up that clutch. Now most of this kind of damage happens because of general wear or a lack of cooling. You can see that this entire thing definitely heated up and stained the outside of this casing here. Also doing things like neutral drops and burnouts take a huge toll on the wear components inside of these clutch systems. Alright, let's take this one apart which is nestled inside of the last one. Yeah, someone send me a pick set too because this one's almost broken. Yep, you can see the piston inside of there and check out these clutches. These are really worn out. Look how dark this is. It should be a brown color. You can even see some burn marks on here. Look at that. Shouldn't be like that. Yeah, it also smells pretty burnt. Kind of like your uncle's work jacket that he never washes. So the output of the first two set of clutches is going to go to this intermediary shaft here, which are then going to go to the next set of clutches over here. And you do notice that there's these holes over here which are going to feed the pistons inside of these clutches to lock them up. Now this clutch, which was nestled inside of here, doesn't look too bad on the outside. But you can see as I wipe my finger here, it does have a lot of metal particles stuck to it. Once again, there's a snap ring to remove. Snap ring out. Yeah, this one's pretty burnt up as well, on the outside here at least. You see on the inside here, the frictions are looking a lot better. And I can feel the friction discs on here. That's how they're supposed to look, nice and brown. Now on the outside of that was this clutch over here. This one's looking a little bit on the darker side, but not completely burnt up. So this transmission must have gone through a huge overheating issue or some sort of neglect. Now this drum thing took a lot of work to get out because it seems like it was almost pressure fitted inside of the case. This side here we have a piston. And on this side here, we probably have a piston behind all of these clutches. Once again, let me take off all of the snap rings here. And then let's check this clutch. Yep, same story here. Once again, it's all burnt up, but uh, not completely like the first set of clutches. Now these two holes here come from the valve body, and that's what feed the two pistons to push out on these clutches. Now finally, we're here at the planetary gear sets. This is a five-speed automatic transmission. A typical planetary gear set gives you about nine different ratios, three of which are reversed. So by having these two together, you can get five forward useful gears and of course reverse. Now the last clutch we took apart actually splines up to the planet carrier over here. Now the ring gears over here splines up to the clutch inside of the transmission casing that I still have yet to get out and then at the back here we have the planet carrier it goes to the output shaft to the transfer case let's take this thing apart here we've got the planet carrier and then in between there we have the sun gear now the sun gear does have a spline on the inside here now the planet carrier always forms the output that goes to the drive shaft to the back now I can take out the ring gear there we go you can see it's spline to the barrel over here here is the planet carrier. There's a sun gear over here. Okay, so there's actually another planetary gear set inside of here. There we go. So that's the ring gear. And then we've got this planetary gear set with its ring gear. Alright, so let me just figure out what's going on here. I've got to correct myself, there's actually three planetary gear sets that are all nestled together here. This one here is the first one. It's got the planet carrier here that's got the ring gear for it over here. Now the sun gear for it actually connects back to those previous clutches that we saw. Then inside of here we have the ring gear for the next planetary gear set that was sandwiched inside of here. Now its sun gear is actually shared with the final planetary gear set at the back here, which has the ring gear that was splined to this barrel. Now the overall condition of the gears physically look okay, but if you look closely you'll see there's a lot of metal powder that was run through here. So this transmission definitely had catastrophic failure with everything inside of here failing. All right, let's take a look at the valve body to see if we see anything interesting. Inside of here, it actually looks pretty clean. I don't really see the fluid being too black. It's more of a brownish color, which is fine. I don't see too much deposits run through inside of here. Take a look on this side here where it has all of these solenoids that control everything. And what's interesting is this was before the days of computers. You can see it's just one long wire that runs out and that'll probably go to your ECU. There was no computers that's built in inside of here or a mechatronic unit that you have to program or anything like that. It's just straight solenoids to straight wires. That's it. This thing's basically a giant maze where fluid's gonna flow and determine which clutch is gonna lock up in order to give you the correct gear ratio. I'm just surprised I didn't see much more carnage inside of here for all that metallic fluid run through here. It doesn't look the cleanest. It's definitely dirty. Now the oil pan's got these magnets on it to collect these kind of particles. And these magnets are full. Look at that. I can just swipe that up with the toothbrush there. You'll see how much gunk comes out of this. If someone did not maintain this transmission, clean out these magnets, change the fluid, or treat it nicely, and that's why it failed. And that's pretty much what's inside of the 5-speed ZF transmission. Now, I wish I could tell you a little bit more about the vehicle or the mileage or the cause of the failure, but it sure feels great to smell like burnt transmission fluid and have to go inside and face my wife right now. Make sure you subscribe if you want to see more videos just like this one.